I always like it when I find a very unique tree and this Chinese elm is very interesting. If you look closely, the root stock of this tree is very different than the trunk. Typically on a Chinese elm you can see that sort of puzzled appearance on the bark, smoothness of the bark go down into the roots. But clearly this is a grafted tree. It appears to be a Siberian elm or an American elm that is grafted to a Chinese elm and I've never seen this. This was quite the surprise. So we got up into the tree and another surprise was how poorly it was pruned in the past. The last guys that did this really should not have been up there. All these cuts are uh, they're, they're horrific and, and when I think about it and I see that beautiful trees like this are being pruned by people that shouldn't be in the business it, it, it really bothers me you know everywhere I look there were bad cuts either stubs or flush cuts or areas of the tree that you know there was there was no rhyme or reason to what was being done so our job was to make the tree as safe as possible and we had to get a lot of this stuff back off of the roof this is interesting I wanted to show you this this piece right here if you look at it very closely you can see that there's a little rip and you have to be careful you have to understand the species and how it behaves so in this case he left a longer piece and cut it fast but if he wasn't careful it could have ripped and torn all the way down the bark you know he knows it knows better a lot of times you do an undercut to prevent that sort of thing but you have to understand the characteristics of each tree that you're working on in order to understand how to make the cuts correctly so Jorge is up on the side that I can't get the bucket to and I'm over here putting the bucket up on the lawn I wanted to show you this long straight trunk which is also quite unusual for a Chinese elm Chinese elm is also um, known as Ulmus parvifolia look at that flesh cut oh that kills me when I see stuff like that it, you know chainsaws sometimes are the worst tool for tree work for people that don't know there's a cut I, I just made and you know you have to understand what the difference between a flush cut and a stub is here clearly is a big stub and in many cases a lot of my work is cleaning up old stubs but you can see how the active cambium tissue is trying to cover that up it's going to grow and grow and grow and ultimately cover it up unless you cut it down to a point and try to protect that tissue you can see I've got one little tiny nick up there but you know always try to protect the new tissue that is 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 trying to grow to cover up that that wound so here's another bad cut everywhere I look each of these bad cuts leads to long-term weaknesses sometimes you have to leave just a little bit of a stub to minimize the size of the wound you know, as you get closer and closer and closer, the wound gets larger and larger. So I'm always telling people to make the smallest wound size diameter of the wound that you can without it being a big stub. And you realize that when you get closer and closer, that wound gets larger as it, as it grows. So that's what it looks like when we're done. And you can see um, it, it looks very natural. It doesn't look stubby all the way around. I told the client he doesn't have to do it for five more years. So let's carry on to another job that we did this week that I wanted to talk about. Now, this was a tough one because it was a hillside job. And it's probably one of my least types of work, least favorite types of work, and that's view trimming. Now, where I live, views are very important. Maintaining views are important because property value is directly associated with what kind of a view you have. So a good view can easily add hundreds of thousands of dollars to the, the property value. So you can see here we had a situation that we had to get all the brush up from this long steep hill. We protected part of the railing. The, the deck had just been redone. But we had two options. We either had to carry all the brush up, which some of it made sense, or use a rope throw a rope all the way down and and tie it up and pull it up so there was another negative here there was not room for me to get my truck and chipper up on the job it was a long steep steep driveway with very little turnaround so um, I was shuttling brush all the way down the road we had to park the truck about half a mile down there's the deck and there's the steepness of the hillside and you can see 
clearly that we had some issues to deal with. There's another aspect of this job that I, I'll show you here in a minute is the hillside was so steep that we were slipping and sliding all over the place just trying to get the stuff up. So part of the job meant that I had to cut a trail that made it accessible. So it took me, oh, probably an hour to an hour and a half of working along the hillside and, and making a suitable trail that, that enabled us to get this stuff up here. Now the views that we had to do here, you can see that somebody else had worked on it in the past and, and it was either bringing the top down so that you can see over it like it had been done in the past or opening up windows to see through the trees. And it, it's very easy to overdo it. Here we are shuttling brush. We made six full truckloads um, in my pickup down to the, the truck. Okay, here's the trail I had to cut. This was a pain in the rear, I tell you. It was a lot of work, and it, uh, it, it winded me pretty good. Um, but not only was the hillside covered with leaves and uh, fresh uh, moisture from a recent rain, it, you know, the, the plant life, everything made it really slippery. So that, uh, you know, fortunately, we were working on time on this job, and I told her, I said, in order to do this, I've got to establish... Uh, a workable environment that we can do it so a lot of it was throwing the rope down and hand over handing the the pieces up and that was a workout and other parts of it were shuttling it up and out either to the right and we had to cut all these steps or um, all the way out to the back where there was a there was a gate uh, I think we did about 75 percent rope hauling up over the railing and you can see we put a piece of burlap up there to, to protect it. We all took turns because it wore us out. But this is getting close to the end of the job. You can see there was one big cut we had to make because it was rotted from the past. They, they had previously cut it. And here's where we were shuttling the brush to down at the end of the hill. That was about the second load. And here's the final work. Once again, views are more important than the value of the trees sometimes. So we do the best job we can under the circumstances. Hey, thanks for watching.